Hey, everybody, I just thought I'd give some interesting uh, thoughts on this study uh, for endometriosis and antibiotics. Um, it was recently published um, where uh, a group of researchers did a study where they took mice that had been given endometriosis via a surgical model where they actually have a little bit of endometrium implanted on the wall of their peritoneum, which is sort of a surgical model of endometriosis. And then they treated them with antibiotics. And over time, they found that mice that were treated with antibiotics had a reduction in their endometriotic implants versus mice that weren't treated. And that led them to wonder, okay, maybe antibiotics has some sort of mechanism for treating endometriosis. Um, I think in the Facebook community, in the online community, this has kind of exploded because everyone feels like, oh my gosh, this is pharma, you know, trying to take advantage of the endometriosis community or whatever conspiracy theory you want. But none of that is the reality. What, what it is is that they're just doing some, doing some research and they have some results and they published it. Now the question is, is that what do those results mean? Um, the first general problem is that mice aren't humans, so you can't always translate what you find in a mouse to what you find in a human. Um, the second thing is that the model of taking a piece of endometrium and sort of stitching it into a mouse's peritoneum and calling it endometriosis has a number of problems. Um, it's even possible that that very mechanism uh, creates a bacterial involvement in the lesion that would then respond to antibiotics that wouldn't normally respond to a normal human antibiotic uh, endometriotic nodule and the antibiotics may have no impact on a human endometriotic nodule. Um, you know, to the best of our knowledge, uh, endometriosis is not an infectious disease. It's not caused by bacteria or by viruses. That being said, that is one of the sort of fringe theories of, of maybe some endometriosis does have to do with some sort of, uh, you know, bacterial or viral vector. It probably doesn't, but it's an easily answered question. We're actually, uh, in my practice, I'm consulting with a genetics company and we're going to start looking at endometriotic implants and actually looking at the genetic mutations that are happening within implants and comparing them to the genetics of the patient's endometrium, the native endometrium. And one of the side effects of that study is that we will find out if there's any bacteria or viruses in the endometriotic um, implant because basically you sequence all the DNA in the implant and you will find uh, bacterial or viral DNA and we have a database of basically every organism in the universe that has ever been sequenced. And so if you find the DNA of a virus in the endometriotic implant, then you know the virus was there. Um, so that information will be published separately at some point and kind of will either refute or corroborate this idea. But as far as this particular study, there's no reason for people to get all upset about it. It's just a piece of information. Media got, up, media got onto it and published it. I think a lot of times lay media blows things out of proportion and, and makes kind of statements that are beyond what the original researcher made. I don't think the original researcher said this is a cure for endometriosis. I think the lay media grabbed onto it and kind of like extrapolated and said, oh, maybe this is a cure for endometriosis, which even if it has an efficacy in humans, it only reduced the size of the implants slightly. So anyway, that was just a thought that I had, thought I would share it because I know people have been talking about it. And thanks very much. Uh, I'm Nick Fogelson. If you don't already know that, Northwest Endometriosis and Pelvic Surgery, if I could be of help, uh, give me a call, 503-715-1377. Thanks.